Hello everybody. This is our second part that we're going to be machining out, our connecting rod. Um, so when we are done modeling it, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are in our manufacturing workspace. And what I am going to do uh, to machine this out is we'll start off by taking our uh, end mill and we'll be facing it. After that, what we'll do is we'll do a 3D adaptive to rough this out. Then what we'll do is we'll come back with a, um, a contour and we'll get nice and tight to that. We'll spot drill these two holes. We'll drill that hole. We'll drill this hole. Uh, and then finally, we will do a chamfer um, on these holes. When we're done with that, what we'll do is we'll flip this over and we'll face the rest of it. And then from there, what we will do is we'll just chamfer these two holes as well. Um, something new that we're going to be doing in this model versus our last one is in our second operation we'll be using soft jaws rather than just using our parallels so that we can grip this uh, part firmly. Um, and then also what we'll be doing is we'll be drilling this hole all the way through and we'll be indicating off of this hole for our second operation um, to be able to do so. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a new setup. And for this, what I want to do is I'm going to select my stock tab and we are going to pick a fixed size box. Now, our regular blanks that we're going to be doing, uh, everything is done out of a two inch by one inch uh, rectangular bar. Um, so our width is going to be two inches. Our depth is going to be one inch. And our height, well, we'll cut this on our a uh, bandsaw is at three quarters of an inch or 0.75. So our height will be 0.75. What we'll do is we will leave our model position right in the center for this one. Um, the reason being is we don't want to, if we bring this up too high, then we'll have to face a lot off of our second operation. If we drop this too low, what will wind up happening is uh, we run the risk of running into our, uh, the jaws of our vise. Um, so if we center it, we have an offset from the bottom of and the top of 0.15, uh, which will be uh, good for our needs. So we're going to go back to our setup tab and our orientation. Uh, we can just use the model orientation. So with that, you should have your Z going up, your Y um, going away from us, and our X going to the right. That's if we uh, model it according to the video that you just watched to model this. Um, if it is a little bit different, what we might have to do is select your z-axis plane and your x-axis and then there you would select your different axes that way and then you may have to flip your axes to be able to get it in this orientation. But after you have it in this orientation, what we can do is we can select our stock box point, select our stock point, and we will click right there. So that now we, when we bring in our hemir, we can zero off of that edge, the front and the top. And when we're all done, we can hit OK. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to come in with our facing tool, our end mill, and be able to take off that top. So I'll take, select my facing tool path. My tool that I'm going to be using in my RFHS tool library is tool number one. It's our inch and a half face mill. We will select that. And for this, uh, we're going to be using conservative feeds, um, our, our basics that we have. So our spindle speed, we're going to stick at 4,000. Um, our cutting feed rate will be uh, 20s all the way down. Our geometry um, will just take off our, our top right there. Our heights. For this one, because we are so far down, we are going to go from our stock top for a lot of these. For our um, clearance height, for our retract height, for our feed height, and then for our top height because we are so far down from our part. Uh, in our last part, we are nice and close to the top. Um, we were 20 thou down from there, but because we want to face off so much, we're going to go from our stock top. And then for our bottom height, we're going to do our model top. And that should get us right to the very top of our uh, model right there. So then for our passes, 
uh, we are going to do a uh, pass direction of zero degrees. Uh, we're not going to do any stock offset. For our direction, we are going to go both ways. That should save us a little bit of time in machining uh, because um, it's so narrow of a part that our mill bit will be able to go right down the center. So we'll just be going back there, back and forth. Uh, multiple depths, we want to select that. And our maximum step down is going to be 30 thou or 0.03. Uh, everything in linking, that looks good. We'll press OK. And here we have our facing tool path. So we'll click simulate that, see what that looks like. It's going to come down, and it's just going to surface all the way down, taking 30 thousandths of an inch per pass. All right. So that's our first one. Our second one is we want to do a 3D adaptive. So we'll click our 3D adaptive clearing. And for this one, we are going to select our quarter inch and mill bit. So again, I'm selecting my RFHS tool library. And I go down to number four, which is our quarter inch and mill. So we'll hit select right there. And again, for this one, we will use a spindle speed of 4,000 RPM, cutting feed rate of uh, 20 going through there. Our geometry that we are going to do is um, just our regular stock contours. And we want to make sure that we have rest machining selected. So what that's going to do is the rest machining will take everything that we did previously, and it, it'll ignore that. So it won't machine any of this stuff out. It'll just come down and machine this part that we have right here. So then we'll go to heights. And because we are coming down to, so our part is faced right there, we don't have to worry about our stock top anymore. What we can do is we can go down to our model tops for everything. And my bottom height, so our, our part here is 0.45. What I'm going to do for my bottom height is I'm going to offset that negative 0.45 and I'm going to go 5 thousandths beyond that. So we're at 0.455 to be able to get past that. So then for our passes, um, our optimal load, what we are going to do is we are using a smaller bit. It's a quarter inch bit. Um, so it's not as stiff as our half inch bit that we used in our last um, in our last part. So what we will do is we will do an optimal load of 0 0.0125. In our previous one, when we were using our half inch bit, our optimal load was 0 0.015. We're going to uh, bring that down a little bit to 0 0.0125. Um, so we have a... Uh, we're going to be climbing milling. It will be a little bit easier on our mill bit. Maximum roughing step down. We're going to take a uh, full depth of cut. So that is 0.45. So that 0.59 will be fine. Um, and then what we want to do is where we have stock to leave. Remember this is just our roughing tool path. And we want to rough within five thousandths of the actual surface. So my radial and axial stock to leave is I will change that to 5 thou or point zero zero five for that. Um, other than that, everything looks good right here. We'll go over to our linking um, and uh, everything here looks good as well. So when we hit OK, we'll calculate that tool path. And when we simulate that, this one's going to be kind of long, and it's just going to keep on going around in circles until we get close to the part. Then it's going to get a little bit closer and start doing that tapered edge right there. So we'll exit that. My next one is I want to do a finish pass, so I'm going to do a 2D contour. And again, we're going to stick with that quarter inch flat end mill. We're going to have a spindle speed of 4,000. However, we are going to bring down that cutting feed rate to 15 inches a minute. Uh, we want to have it nice and slow 
or slow it down a little bit, uh, give us a little bit better surface finish. Our geometry, we want to select the bottom right there. We have our heights again, model top for everything. Then from there, our offset, we want to go negative 0.455, and that'll get us five thousandths below that. Our passes, um, we are good right there. Uh, we aren't going to be doing multiple depths. We want to go all the way uh, down. Sideways compensation, we'll go left. And then... Here we look to be good. So I'm going to press OK. And what will wind up happening is when we simulate this, you'll see that we don't have anything there because there is still a little bit of material left before we hit the actual sidewall. So we'll get nice and close. We'll go into our material a little bit, and then we'll, our, our base material, and then we'll uh, get nice and tight to our part. So we'll exit that. Next thing, what we want to do is we want to uh, spot drill this. Now this one is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to select my spot drill. And for this, the tool that I'm going to select is actually going to have to be a mill bit. So in machining, what we don't want to do is we don't want to be milling with drill bits and you generally don't want to be drilling with mill bits. However, uh, we have a special bit that's called a mill drill um, that is able to both spot drill as well as do chamfers. So um, that is our quarter inch uh, bit and in our tool library, we'll take a look here, we have in tool 12, that is our spot drill it's the same tool as in tool 23. If I can go, to, go over to milling, we go to tool 23, it's the exact same bit that we use for both. Um, and this is called a mill drill. So we can have the same tool, but it's numbered in two different ways. Um, so to be able to keep it in our ATC, what we're going to do is we have a drilling operation. Instead of just doing um, our quarter inch uh, drill, which is tool 12, I want us to select milling over here and go down to our uh, quarter inch chamfer. So we'll select that. Uh, it's got a 45 degree included angle right there. And we'll hit select for that. Uh, same thing, uh, our spindle speed is going to be 4,000 RPM. Our plunge and retract feed rate are just going to be 15. That's going to be kind of our standard that we're going to be going through. Um, so our geometry that we are going to be selecting are our inside holes there and there. And then for our heights, again, we already have this thing faced off, so we're going to be doing model top for everything. And we are just going to go down 50 thou. So we're not going to be drilling down a ton. We're just going to be giving a good spot drill right there. Uh, what we'll do is we'll come back later to be able to chamfer these edges. So then our cycle, we're just going to be doing a uh, rapid out drilling. And so that will give us a spot there and a spot there. Next up, we're going to be drilling out this hole. So we'll select our drilling uh, tool path. For this one, this is a size H. So we go to the RFHS tool library. We come down to tool 19, which is 0.266, our H drill. We're going to select that. And again, 4,000, 15 inches. Uh, we are going to select this whole face for that one. For our heights, we're going to be going to uh, model top for all of them, except for 
this bottom one. What we want to do is we want to drill tip through the bottom. So we'll take a look at this, and I can't move my mouse, but what's going to happen is we want to drill all the way through the bottom of our part. Because when we flip this over and put it through our soft jaws, we're going to use our indicator to be able to indicate the center of this. So in our second operation, we run our cam system for this. We will uh, be putting our work coordinate system right at the, um, it would be at the bottom of this hole in this operation, but when we flip it over, it's going to be the top center of this hole on the other side. So we're going to drill the tip through the bottom. So it goes all the way through. But remember, we also have um, our uh, 0.15 of an inch uh, material underneath there from when we're doing our setup. So for our breakthrough depth, we want to do a uh, 0.15 beneath that. So what will happen is this will go through that 0.15 all the way through there. So then we'll go for our, through our cycle. That's going to be our chip breaking, our partial retract. Um, our pec depth, uh, we'll leave that there. Um, this all looks good. We'll press OK. And what we'll see is that it goes all the way through our part right there. All right. Um, and this, I'm actually, I want it to go a little bit further down so that we get a nicer face for our uh, circle, so not, or for our hole. So I'm going to uh, right click on there, hit edit, and go back to my heights, and I'll do a breakthrough of 0.2. Let's see where that winds up. And that's a lot better for us. So that's going to make it all the way through for us. Okay, um, This will be fine. We have plenty of space between our parallels and where that goes. So we won't have to hit any, we won't be hitting anything. All right, the next one, um, we're going to be doing another drill. And that is going to be on this diameter right here. Our tool for this is not going to be our H drill. We want to hit select there. Uh, this is actually going to be our number 29 drill. So we go back to our RFHS tool library, and our number 29 drill is tool 15, which is right there. We'll hit select. And again, 4,015 inches a minute is good. Geometry is going to be that hole. Um, for our heights, again, model top for everything. And then we want to have our tip drill uh, tip through the bottom, and then we're just going to do a breakthrough depth of uh, 0 0.1. That's a lot. 0 0.05. That'll be fine right there. We don't have to drill all the way through on this one uh, because when we come back and we face it, we'll be fine on that side. So for this one again, uh, that's going to be a uh, chip breaking. Uh, that's good for our pec depth. Press OK on there, and then we'll be drilling down um, for that one. Last thing we need to do is we need to do our little chamfers there. So our chamfers for this is we're going to go to our 2D and select 2D contour. And here is where uh, we were talking about earlier. So before we used, uh, when we were making our hole making, or our, our drilling, we selected that drill mill, which is that uh, number 23 tool. Right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select that tool again, but instead of using it as the spot drill uh, feature of this tool, we are going to be using it as a chamfering tool. So we'll hit select there, and for this, our cutting feed rate, we are going to slow that down to 15 inches a minute. For our heights, what we want to do is we want to select our top contour. Please do not select the bottom contour because we have this modeled. We want to select the top contour. And then for our heights, everything is going to be model top. 
even our top height and bottom height is all going to be model top and our offsets are going to be at zero. We want just to run that tool right along there. So then the next thing, we go to our passes and what we will be doing is our chamfer width is going to be a pass of, or a, uh, a width of zero and our tip offset is going to be 0 0.025 and what that's going to do is that's going to bring our our bit down and in a little bit um, because we don't want to run the very tip of our bit of our chamfer bit right along that edge um, we can wear it out and you can break it um, so what we'll do is we'll drop it and bring it in a little bit so that our bit will run just along the edge of that so uh, linking we're good there we'll press ok and then you'll see that we are able to, when we simulate this, we will be able to just run our chamfer bit right on the inside of our tool two uh, holes. All right, so when you're done with this cam, uh, have your instructor check it off, and then what you can do is you can post-process this, uh, bring it into the shop, and we can machine our first operation.